Alrighty, so Bethesda's showing off some Starfield, which is very exciting. Um, we're going to go check it out. So, um, yeah, we're going to go check it out. Man, all right, firstly I want to state that I haven't got much faith in Bethesda. Not because of Fallout 76, just uh, it's mainly what they've been doing lately with all their shit. Like, they, they had this Player One campaign where they, sh where they shit on EA and they went and released Fallout 76. I was excited for that game, and then Todd said, um, everyone here is online. I was like, fuck, I'm out of there. So, we're going to watch this right now, alright? Now, I have seen a couple things, like, like a short little clips on my phone, but, you know, someone said like a thousand points. Man, I don't, that is a big, mm, I don't know if they're going to do that. And no doubt Todd's going to talk his fucking ass off. That's kind of what he does. He talks a lot of shit, um, and that's kind of what he's paid to do, you know, because he's a good public speaker. But he talks a lot of shit, um, over fucking talk stuff, and it becomes meme worthy. Like it just works. Um, so we're gonna watch it. We're gonna watch it. I'm an Australian, so yeah, as you can see, I'm eight hours late because fucking I live on the other side of the planet, to, uh, the northern hemisphere, and um, I enjoy my sleep, even though I fucking suck at sleeping. So we're gonna get into it. We're gonna see what it's all about. Fucking seven, man. Also, for you PlayStation 4 users, get wrecked. <laughs> it's exclusive to Microsoft. <laughs> Control is this constellation Starship Frontier. Hopefully there's a voice acting again. Call that. Paul. PlayStation warning. It's hard to express how excited anymore. all of us at Bethesda are to be here with you today. We're so grateful you're spending the time and we know you've waited a long time to finally see Starfield. Uh, it's easily our most ambitious game ever. Like our previous games, it's an epic role-playing game where you get to be who you want and go where you want. But this time, you'll be exploring space. So let's jump right in. This is early in the game as you arrive on the mysterious moon of Crete. 15 minutes on point. Looks like a shithole, I love it. facility is in this direction. Very good, yes, sir. Oh, I, it, they're, they're even look at the bottom of your eye. It even looks like a 10 mil pistol. 10 for Abernathy's, holy shit, mate. Not for everything else. It does look very full out for you, doesn't it? But we're in space, so you know, hey, it might be do a lot better. Firstly, I want to pause it there. You know, this does give me like some cool fallout vibes. Um, Fallout 4, Fallout was very weird for me as a kid because I was 13 when I fucking played it and I was like, what the fuck is going on here, man? We're in the future, but these cars, like, they belong in the retro. 
you know, 1940s, 1950s. And I, I didn't, it, didn't, it took me a couple of years to realise that it was an alternate universe where the Cold War never ended. Um, and their crazy science shit where they mix the past and the future all the time back into Fallout and the Minutemen are a perfect example. Um, it might actually pay off you if they're really crazy scientific, you know, sci-fi shit they do in their Fallout games. But this is looking fucking mint. Nah, you want none of that shit? He's like, nah, fuck that. That's my choice. Citizen shit, and that's what I when I saw the little clips on my phone, I was like, this reminds me of Star Citizen. Physical mining, which we didn't have before that, you had to just grab random shit and turn it into whatever you needed. The new is this. It would appear that pirates of the Crimson Fleet are using the facility. That gun looks like shit, it almost looks fucked, guys. Low gravity, low jetpack. some initial encounters, you're invited to join Constellation, who, in the future the game is set in, are the last group of space explorers. To meet them, you'll head to the capital city of New Atlantis. Now, this is something that I've been dreaming for in a fucking Bethesda game all my, like, existence. Um, you go into a town, white run, you kill everybody, it's a ghost town. And you're never ever getting them back, right? Never getting them back. I've been dreaming for procedurally generated AI that look different fucking forever, man. Because the Khajiit are the most rarest people in all of Skyrim. Yet every fucking bandit clan's got a Khajiit mage. And there's only one Khajiit that actually lives in a civilized place, and that's in the College of Winterhold. The rest of them are on the roads, um, or in abandoned areas. Man, this this is kind of what I've been wanting, you know, and this is also exciting for the future, but there's the games, to where if I go into a, a fucking cave, I'm not going to be fighting the same person every then, like every time. Like, again, with the Skyrim, everything's predefined levels list. It's characters, it's, it's boring. This, I'll be able to go into a town, murder a bunch of people, and not worry about losing out on a merchant, or anything like that. I'm a fucking psycho. The guns look like shit, I'll be honest. Yeah, they look like the Institute guns. They go like the guns. Welcome smash? to Constellation. Oh. We have a lot to talk about. We're all here because we're committed to the biggest question of all. What's 
out there. These artifacts could be everything we've been looking for. As to what they are, what they're building. You will be part of solving that puzzle now. So, you found something? A new guy found it. You dug up the artifact, right? That means you saw it. The visions? Yeah, my sequences. The artifact you found appears to be one of many, scattered across the galaxy. If we can find more, we can unlock their secrets. Beautiful, isn't it? Hey. The Imagine the modding capabilities of this. Modders would be able to fuck off and just create their own worlds. And if it's got procedurally generated AI, procedurally means random, uh, like generated AI, it's going to have procedurally generated planets, right? Because oh I read someone there's like a thousand planets. Oh, it could be bullshit. I haven't got that far in the video yet. But holy fuck, man. The, st the, the modding steps are just going to go... That's nuts. The, like, simply the modding potential for this is going to go... Fucking nutters. The man who sold me this told me that it spoke to him. Of course, the settled systems is full of groups with other priorities. That's the Crimson Fleet! Everybody get ready! The fleet doesn't follow the rules. Agree to work for UCC Steph. Together, we take down these cutthroat pirates. We're not just here to shoot the bad guys. We're peacekeepers. We protect the people of the Free Star Collective. When you sign up with the Crimson Fleet, no one quits. The only way out is death. Yeah, that's cool. You get two choices. You sign up the good guys, you sign up the bad guys. That's what we haven't been able to do in a very long time. Even in Fallout 4, you could sign up the bad guys, but your character's already a predefined good guy. Which made no fucking sense. Um, yeah, that's interesting. That's good. The path ahead may be dangerous. But we are not stopping. If you had arachnophobia and you're scared of Skabaras and Skyrim, you're gonna shit a solid golden Lego brick. Most dusties don't even make it this far. Because whatever lies at the end of this road will change humanity. Are there aliens? Forever. That gives you a look at the stories in Starfield. But ultimately, it's not our story. It's the story you create by who you are and the choices you make. And that starts with character creation. It's our most can flexible yet. You can customize all the elements of how you look. You'll pick a background that gives you three starting skills. It says here you spend some time as a diplomat. Having a way with words might prove useful. There are optional traits, and these come with unique advantages and disadvantages. But it's not just in how you can look, but in how your Wait, character whoa, whoa, plays hold on. Hold on and develops. Optional traits, and these come with unique advantages and disadvantages. But it's not just... That looks like Cyberpunk. In how that looks like Fallout, a bit. You can look. I don't have like the full open mask thing. I like, I'm like a skull mask, bro. Fuck out. And how your character plays and develops. So it's the skill system it's combines the best from our previous games, and you can unlock new skills as you level up, and then you rank those skills up by using them and completing challenges. And there's deep crafting systems from running research projects with the resources you find to crafting weapon mods needed to survive. And you can build your own outpost. No, oh, bad fucking time. I don't know if that's very far away or that's very close. I don't know. These act as a home away from home for survival and resource generation. You can choose where and how to build each one. That's good. Like and that. you can hire characters you meet to keep it up and running. Oh, hell yeah. Hire characters. That just means modding potential fucking 10,000, bro. If you've seen my Skyrim mods, you know I like to make a lot of followers and they're pretty much my army, my mercenaries, all that sort of stuff. Dude, I want to go fritz on this and watch like the mods. And like, oh, 
I need to finish my Skyrim story, but I don't want to rush it because I love Skyrim. I love playing my, my, my game, but um, this is going to have some really good fucking future potential. But that's not all. You can even build your own spaceships. Oh, yeah. We have to like fleet them, like have NPCs in them and shit. Like, fly them you and can stuff. choose crew members. Oh yeah. And yes, you can completely customize the look and layout. Oh yeah, baby! Dude, that shit's cool, man. That's I've been thinking about stuff like that for ages. Like, you know, how like, imagine if you can metamorph your own weapons. So, like, maybe next Elder Scrolls game is gonna have the exact same thing. You get to choose your hilt, your pummel, your side guards, and your blade. Maybe the carvings or the shape of the blade. So this is awesome. There's loads of different modules, ship manufacturers, and more. I'm just gonna I drive have around to say, a big it's square. It's so cool. Like, we just um, absolutely love my this. My imagination is shit house. That's cool as fuck. It's bro. not just how the ship looks; it's how it performs, from engines to shields to weapon systems. Because yes, you can fly it. Thrusters boosted. This, this is the thing, this is what I saw, man. This looks like Starfield, bro. That's awesome. That does look pretty cool. You get to fly the atmosphere, though. Is that a Starfield thing? Have we copied that FM? Sorry, Star Citizen. Fuck, they confuse me sometimes. Don't fight, baby. This is a disabled feature where you can actually like disable them and board them and shit. We can't wait for all of you to experience the game. Thanks again for being with us today and thanks for all the support you've given us over the decades, especially on this game. It's been an incredible journey for us making it, but we know that's really only the beginning for it's when all of you play it that the real journey begins. And you may be wondering, just how big is this game? So we Here thought we we'd take one last moment and show you. Let's take a look at one of our planets, Jemison. Now, this is what I'm mainly concerned about, man, because Skyrim is Skyrim and Fallout 4 is Fallout. They've only ever really done one map. The biggest map today is Fallout 76. Um, how have they transitioned from, from that to this? Because everything you see in Skyrim, from the, the piece of fucking grass to a, to a a skull of an animal is hand placed by a Bethesda, you know, studios employee. It's, it's done by a developer. They haven't had procedural generated NPCs, right? Uh, procedural generation tools. And look by looks what they do now: procedural, procedural generated um, planets and NPCs. Um, how have they manage this? Because this is what when I, when I first heard Bethesda was making a space game, I was like, "Fuck right off, man! What, what, what am I going to do when it go to three planets?" Um, so this is what I'm mainly concerned about, and this is what they really need to sell me on if they want to sell me a space sim or a space Bethesda game, because Skyrim is Skyrim, man, and I'm really excited, and the only reason I'm still playing Skyrim is for Beyond Skyrim mods. They're going to add the new, entirely new maps, previous games, and games we haven't really ever been to, unless it's Elder Scrolls Online, so I can travel Timriel. And what's going to happen with the next Elder Scrolls? Everyone's saying it's going to be in Redgar because it's just a fashion where they go from one country to another. Is it going to be all of Timriel? Are we going to have a mission? But then it might kill the future of the Elder Scrolls games. But I don't know, man. I, I, would love, I would love to travel all of Timriel and then go 200 years into the future or 500 years into the future 
and see how much has changed. See the effects that I did, the very minimal effects. Maybe like there's a hero statue to my character in, the, in, in a city. But maybe there's small battlegrounds or memorials or something. I don't know. I'm getting far out of my head here right here. But this is kind of what I really want them to sell me on. Now, now Todd has made me super wet, right, man? He like, I'm, I'm, my legs are wide open. I'm like, fucking invade me. <laughs> um, you know, it, he's a bullshit artist, which is good because that's his job. Um, his also job is to direct the game. Um, so he's kind of sold me, but this is what's really going to make me, you know, rip off those clothes and uh, fucking jump headfirst into the action. You can land in New Atlantis, but you can also land and explore anywhere on the planet. And it's not just this planet, it's all the planets in the system. From barren but resource heavy ice balls to Goldilocks planets with life. And not just this system, but over a hundred systems. Over yeah, 1,000 planets, all open for you to explore. This is what I'm going to be cautious about. I'm not going to lose my shit, screw like a little bitch, and then fucking run around my house naked you know, and get arrested by the cops. Because um, if 1,000 planets, how many of them are going to actually be useful? Like, and what am I going to be able to do with those planets? You know, because if there's a certain resource, you're going to go there, and once you've got that resource, you don't need it anymore, you're going to fuck off and never go visit it, visit it again. Can I create cities or, you know, mods that no doubt will do that. Um, big giant outposts, like, you know, with it goes from just being a dust ball to a major farming settlement or a mining settlement. Can I do that? Can I then have to fight off these blood crimson pirates? Or if I've joined the pirates, I have to fight off these bloody... Um, protectors. Is there going to be slavery in it? Is there going to be other alien species like sentient beings? Um, probably not. I'd, I'd, I'd kind of like that. We, you know, if you're going to have a space game with shit tons of systems, you might as well have some sort of alien species in it. But I'd, I haven't said anything about that and I very really doubt it's going to be. I don't know. I'd not, I, don't, I know fuck all about Star Field. We can't wait to see what you find. Was that Mars? <laughs> yes, Mars. Because <laughs> you got the fucking little Rand Rovers that are uh, that get lost on Mars all the time. They just abandon them. That's cool. Can we go to Earth though? That'd be the interesting thing to know. Like, what is Earth in, in 200 years from now? Is it just being abandoned? <laughs> Again, you gotta be cautious with your pre-orders because you know, people keep buying into this shit and it tends up being a flop. Look at Battlefield 2040p for example, that was the most overhyped game for fucking two years. They, they put they cancelled two of their games for their development teams to go work on it, and it came out in fucking pre-alpha stage and just absolutely bombed in the ass. But this is Bethesda. Um, I'm very curious, you know, like a thousand planets, right? they're going to need like this new engine is going to be like next level from anything they've ever done before and whenever a studio changes things up it can either go very well or very fucking bad um like i said with you know npcs the reason i don't murder people in towns i don't kill the blacksmith or this or that it's because it's very boring because the blacksmith is gone maybe that there maybe there's an npc that will take over their job but once you kill that npc it's done for the, you know it's, it's empty it's why i never destroyed megaton in fallout 3 because it was just a waste of a settlement. It was gone. Um, and now that we've got procedur procedurally generated NPCs, maybe they might come in with a different name. A sort of weird personality. Um, but these biostructures, man, holy shit, you know, like... Where are they? Just mute this son of a bitch for a second. Like... 
I don't know, you're probably able to like to spawn somewhere like on the planet, which is good. It's, it's really cool they're able to do that. It's not going to be Star Citizen where you just you fly around it and land on it. But it looks like you have to sort out where you want to go. Um, and it's kind of cool that it's an exploring game which allows you to actually explore planets and not just go to a predefined map. But this leaves a lot of questions for their future games, like Elder Scrolls. Now everyone's depicted that it's going to be in Hammerfell because that's just the Elder Scrolls way. You know, it was, uh, you have the old, older games, but then you've got Morrowind, you've got uh, Cyrodiil, you've got Skyrim. Are we gonna? Are they gonna completely break that chain? What they showed us just a piece of a land that you know to kind of get us guessing. Is this? They only showed us like fucking oh, like ten seconds of footage. Is it gonna be an Elder Scrolls game set in the future, of course, where the Dominion's gone back to War of the Empire? But it's not just sectored in one map anymore. It's all of Temriel. Um because they now have the power to do that. They have procedurally generated um, s planets, NPCs, that kills thousands upon thousands of hours out of development. Um, you, s you still have to go to redefine things and, and for certain characters create the way they look. But they're able to now just pump out a city, you know, um, a landmass, and they'll be able to stretch out the city. So, you know, we're oblivion of the marketplace maybe take you 30 seconds to run around it. It might take you five minutes to run around it in this time, you just stretch it out. Um, that's cool man, that's really cool. I'm kind of sold on this, you know, building your own ships and the way they prescribed it man, it was like next level to the robot shit, you know. Um, I gotta find that crap now. I don't know if I'll be able to. Everything's so blurry. Um, that's awesome, and, and, and able to hire your own crews, that's cool, hopefully, like, I, don't, I doubt they'll do that, because it might be a bit overpowered, but, um, able to have multiple different ships you've created, and the crews you put in them to actually follow you around, um, to create your own sort of unit, I, I would really like to say, I'd, I would love that, man, to create your own sort of, like, s not to be part of this explorer group, or this protector group, or this pirate group, but put your own roots down, create your very own sort of thing, um, with this would be amazing. It's it's got a lot of potential, and especially with modding, man, it's gonna go ape shit. It's gonna go absolutely rampant because you're gonna have like a hundred mods that just add planets, if with either bug or all shit in it, or completely just absorbed out like a like a Nashada, some some serious Star Wars um sort of planets involved. But this is this is Bethesda's jump to next gen. I mean, Fallout 4 felt like a, you know, a, a 2010 game, even though it had better graphics and a few more things. It just it wasn't much new from Skyrim apart from settlement building um, and weapon modifications and stuff like that, but it wasn't that advanced when it comes down to when you think about it, um, apart from, of course, the settlement stuff. But this is that, but they're now finally using tools that allow them to create massive games, man, massive games. So, I'm excited for it. Um, I'd like to see a bit more gameplay, like some like actual like exploring. Like They can do that without giving away the story. Like them exploring planets. They need a bit more of that before they kind of sell me on it. And hopefully they don't sell you on it just by this trailer. And you don't just jump the fence and go on pretty well. I'm not even sure it had a... F I, I didn't play it that far. I didn't get to the very, very end of it. But um, just give it some time and, and hopefully they'll show us like a full explorer video of them actually exploring a planet. Like different planets, like you know, you can see a person walk into a city full of filled full of people, like actual gameplay, um, and a barren planet from like mining resources, or like a very really hostile planet, or something like that. Um, that would be sick. But this is a gameplay trailer, which is awesome. This is a bit I'm getting to right here, which looks phenomenal. Like creating your own ships. Um, that shit's cool. Because you'll be able to like mimic that and create Star Wars ships, and hopefully they you're able to save these presets and. Um, Jump range, you can see all the stats down there. Maybe you're able to save these presets of these ships you've made and upload them online. You know, so if there's someone who really likes your ship designer, you've managed to create like a, a look like X Wing, boom, upload it to Bethesda Net or Skyrim Nexus or Skyrim Nexus, <laughs> uh, Starfield Nexus, and uh, Bob's your uncle. So this is a damn good trailer, man. I really, I really liked it. I didn't really show us going into the atmosphere. I think, you know, unless you get into the atmosphere, it might be slowed like any other Bethesda game. That's not too bad, um, but hopefully it doesn't really impact Starfield. Oh, fuck, wrong game. Star Citizen. Fucking gee, these two just confuse me. 
Um, anyway, I liked it. Hopefully you guys liked it too. But just before you like lose your shit and jump into a pre-order, at least make sure that they are going to show off some exploring DLC of them exploring planets. Like just an, like just a player walking around, talking to the locals, uh, visiting all these different other moons. These, you know, see, see what these planets have to offer because if a thousand planets, man. Um, it is, there's a lot that could like be just uh, be absolutely useless and no fun to really go to. Anyway, I enjoyed it and I'm looking forward to this game. You know, a lot more than I was because you know, I was like, there's to making a space game. That's gonna be fucking horrible. But we're gonna give it a little bit of faith. Um, anyway, hopefully you've enjoyed this video. <clears throat> I certainly enjoyed it. Um, anyway, I'm out of here. Hopefully you guys um, keep yourself safe. Anyway, peace out, fellas and ladies.